Schwartzman and I'm an architect. I came to MIT after I completed my studies at the Architectural Association in London and have worked for a few years in the industry in architectural firms. Um, and I came here to do my PhD and then stayed as a faculty member. I direct the Mediated Matter group at the MIT Media Lab. And the Mediated Matter group is essentially focused around um, uh, digital fabrication technologies that are inspired by nature. Basically, in, in nature, everything grows, right? We uh, generate uh, human tissues and animal tissues and even plants um, as substrates that are informed and infused uh, with environmental forces. And then they grow to create their various functions. In, in architecture and design, we tend to work with elements that are put together uh, to create a larger function. In the natural world, those larger functions are the result of growth. Um, this is also what brought me to 3D printing to begin with. If we can generate tools that, or technologies um, that grow materials rather than subtract materials, then we can control lots of elements in that growth process. We can control material composition, um, and by controlling material composition, we can compute various functions into the same materials. I, I knew I was working with an additive uh, manufacturing technology. So I knew I was working to begin with uh, with layers, with structures that would be designed and fabricated by consecutively layering um, basically very very thin layers one on top of the other. And so that got me thinking about the relationship between those layers. How can we include other information inside those layers? Um, can we vary between material properties as a function of um, what kind of scales? Are we only looking into delineation of particular features of the model? Are we looking into varying, um, varying the material properties as we would vary uh, the pores of, of, of and on our skins? I think 3D printing uh, is, is really, um, has really brought about a revolution in design um, that, that is equivalent perhaps to the printing press revolution, to uh, Gutenberg's revolution of, of movable type in the 1440s. Um, I mean, if you think about it, uh, the, the, the movable type revolution uh, really allowed everyone to, all of us, to print books and to mechanize this process of um, democ democratizing information to, to, to anyone. And without a doubt, the, the 3D printing revolution is um, um, democratizing um, um, and revolutionizing the way we do fabrication. So if in, if in the mid-15th century we could all um, read and write, now we can all make. Um, and so the, the, the type of um, democratization of information that was enabled uh, through um, the movable type um, and the Gutenberg revolution is now being enabled by uh, the 3D printing revolution. And I think it's a big revolution. The, the 3D printing technology um, was extremely important for dreaming up this project. Um, it, was, it wasn't about generating the form of those imaginary beings and then using the 3D printer to print them. It was really about using the multi-material uh, technology as an opportunity to think about how to make those uh, contra you know, uh, uh, contraptions or wearable myths mythical and, and, um, and how to actually make them work as better products or better objects for the human body. So this show um, that, that we're opening in, um, in Centre Pompidou in May 2nd uh, is called Imaginary Beings, uh, Mythologies of the Not Yet. Um, and I, and I, I should say, it, say that it, this, this work is really um, the fruit of a wonderful and, and long collaboration uh, with, with dear, dear friends of mine and dear colleagues of mine. Um, of, of course, friends at Objet and, and Conix, specifically people who have been working on the Conix 500. Um, which through, uh, I, I think, a period of a yeah, good five years, uh, we've, we've been working together and have been going through the various material developments and testing um, and implementation of some of these technologies in, in the design work that, that I've done. So, so this is from the, the technology side. But I should really um, mention two great collaborators on, on this project, 
Uh, the first is my good friend and colleague, Professor Craig Carter uh, from the Department of Material Science and Engineering. And another partner, um, partner in, in this particular project was Joe Hicklin from The Math Works. We had lots of ideas for where we wanted to go with this show. Um, and some of these ideas uh, meant that we need to develop the technological tools and the type of features that I wanted to capture in these new designs. Uh, but these new features were not yet um, were not yet part of the technology, and so part part of the, the the excitement around this show for me was really the opportunity to work with Object hand in hand um, on these new features and to um, to actually make them happen, to see them in physical form and to to see them manifested in in the physical objects which which we'll see in the show. Uh, but really, the combination between material science, computer science, and biology. Um, yielded um, this, this uh, show, this project, um, which now thinking about it and now I'm sort of reaching the end of, of producing and putting all the pieces together, um, I, I really and truly believe that this is really just the beginning of, of a project and, and these models are just the, the proof of um, that, that the dream, this dream is, can actually um, be made possible. So all these principles in science, I wanted to find their analogies in mythology and to sort of use this as my, you know, my fantasy playground to, to explore some of these ideas. Um, and so the exhibit contains 18 objects, um, 18 wearable mythologies uh, for the human body. So essentially there are myths that you can wear um, and that um, talk to the kind of amplification, the kind of superhuman powers that you gain by wearing those. Some of them are more practical than others, of course, some of them remain at the realm of fantasy. One, one such example, for instance, is um, a series of helmets uh, that's called uh, the, the Minotaur series. And so the Minotaur series uh, was, was really an exploration in, in the design of um, a shock absor absorbent helmet that could adjust itself to the form of the skull uh, that it inhabits or which it inhabits. The Minotaur series explores um, how, how you can generate helmets which are responsive and dynamic using soft and stiff materials that can correspond with the kind of shock that, God forbid, you have to absorb. Um, and so this was one, one such example. The corset was inspired by uh, Arachne's myth. Um, and essentially we were looking to design a spider web-like structure uh, that would be uh, filled with certain soft materials um, in the infill regions between the spider web. So imagine um, um, an elastic spider web filled with soft and stiff materials, stiff where you want the spider web to be static and uh, not to move, to not have compliance, and soft materials where you want to have more elasticity, higher levels of compliance, depending on the kind of movement. And Joe Hicklin and Craig Carter um, and I were looking uh, into reaction diffusion patterns uh, and implementing some of those reaction diffusion patterns in um, using multi-material printing. So, so these reaction diffusion patterns which are abundant in nature, they explain all sorts of principle in nature and actually they, they're a great Turin model for various computational processes as well, um, is what inspired the, the form of the core set and basically moving from inner softer materials to uh, more external uh, stiffer uh, stiffer materials um, that, that vary in property and also vary in the kind of density of the wrinkles, the size of the wrinkles, etc. So 3D printing is this uh, currently new, this new frontier of, of, of digital fabrication. Um, but when you think about it, you know, these technologies, certain technologies um, that, that help us or, or make our life you know, better, more efficient in some way, they come and go every five or ten years. Technologies that actually make a difference, that actually generate a paradigm shift, they don't come that often. And, and I believe that 3D printing is one of those technologies that has created this paradigm shift. I, I, they say that when you're inside the paradigm shift, you can't see the shift. So I, I think we're still inside that kind of uh, tunnel, that, that, that kind of hurricane. Um, and uh, uh, so we're not seeing it, but, but I think uh, again, like Gutenberg's revolution, 
um, you know, the 212 is, is the new 1440s, and, and I think it is a revolution um, uh, that, that is perhaps a, a destructive technology more than anything else because it really changes uh, the way we think about production, the way we think about um, uh, consumer products, uh, and about democratizing uh, processes of uh, designing and making. Not, that is not to say that I truly and utterly believe in democratizing all of design, but, but it definitely affords um, everyone, all of us, with, with these possibilities. So I definitely um, encourage and, and, uh, and, and people to, to look into that and to explore that as a, as, um, um, a method of thinking about making more than, more than uh, simply a service station, but really a way of thinking about the world and about making and fabricating in the artificial. And I don't think I, this kind of work would have been um, um, brought to fruition without the MIT Media Lab and of course without Object and their support with the multi-material print printers. So, uh, so I'm very, very thankful for, for the opportunity to be in this nexus. I'm extremely, extremely excited to, uh, to attend the opening and uh, excited about the prospect of, of uh, showing um, the work that my colleagues and I have been, have been working on for so many, 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 many months. Um, mostly I'm, I'm excited about the possibility of dreaming and, uh, and the possibility that, uh, that one might really turn into physical material form, any poetry that, that resides in, in the mind. <laughs>